Donald Trump says the moderator of Monday's presidential debate should be just a moderator and not fact check. Clinton and Trump are both managing expectations ahead of Monday's debate, but on Thursday, Trump suggested that Lester Holt, he's the moderator on Monday, he suggested that Lester Holt is under pressure to be harder on Trump than on Clinton. What would you like to see, a moderator or a fact checker? Well, I think he has to be a moderator. I mean, you, you're debating somebody, and if she makes a mistake or if I make a mistake, I'll, uh, you know, we'll, we'll take each other on. I think you have to have somebody that just lets him argue it out. And, you know, I think there's a lot of pressure on uh, Lester. I think Lester's a very good person, a very good man. I think that there's a lot of pressure on him because of Matt Larry. You know, when I had the, the town hall, I guess you'd call it, or the forum Commander last week with Hillary, uh, it was... You know, I did well, and I had tough questions, but the polls all had, had hers taking a drubbing in that mm -hmm. one. Now, uh, I will say, they went after Matt Lauer. I've never seen anything they like sure it. Did. And I think my questions were harder than her questions, yeah. if you want to know the truth. And a lot, of, a lot of pressure is being put on Lester Holt. And, you know, it's a Bobby Knight-type pressure with the refs, okay? Bobby Knight would go after <laughs> the refs, and that's what they're doing with Lester Holt, which is, I think, very, very unfair. And a lot of people are watching to see whether or not he succumbs to that pressure. Yeah. Ed O'Keefe is a reporter with the Washington Post, and he joins me now. So, Ed, uh, Trump seems to be warning Lester Holt. Uh, I, it's very unclear exactly what he's trying to say here, because I don't know that he has any kind of information that would lead him to believe that Lester Holt is going to be one way or another with either of them. I think he's just trying to get inside their heads, and he's trying to get inside Hillary Clinton's head, and, and frankly, the Clinton campaign's been doing the same exact thing. You'll notice that uh, her communications director yesterday at one point was suggesting that they're concerned that Trump will get easier questions than she will because the, the sort of the, the stakes or the expectations are so different for them given their, uh, their professional experiences. Look, this is all about just setting the table, setting expectations in advance. Uh, if I were Lester Holt, Anderson Cooper, our buddy Elaine Quijano, uh, and uh, Martha Raddatz and Chris Wallace, I'd stay away from the television and the Twitter until you're done with this thing and just focus in on, on writing your questions and, and being prepared. But I think Trump has a point, which is, uh, you know, ultimately, I think at this point, the voters just want to see these two talk to each other. Uh, and he should be there to sort of guide the conversation and, uh, and ask a few questions, and we'll see. But, uh, you know, uh, part of the frustration, I think, a lot in our business and, and a lot of uh, Trump's critics have also, is that he does say things sometimes that are totally inaccurate and doesn't necessarily get called for it, whether uh, it's in a campaign speech or in some kind of an interview. So, uh, you know, some of that uh, criticism perhaps is justified. But here I think he's just, again, trying to get inside their head a little bit. We should note, Ed, that Clinton's aides say that they're concerned that the moderators might lower their bar of right. the questions to suit the candidate in front of them. Um, our polls show that there are very few voters who haven't already formed an opinion of the candidate. So what's the role of the debates in this cycle? Well, I think, you know, for those few people in these few states that haven't made up their mind, it will be critical. And I think it's also an opportunity to really get a sense of how either these two people would deal with adversity, frankly, uh, because they are facing off against their lead critic and their lead opponent. And, you know, it might, it might give the people an opportunity to see how they might, uh, you know, deal with foreign leaders they disagree with or deal with the opposition party should they have to start negotiating on legislation next year. So I think it's a critical element of the elections. It always is. It is even more so this year because, of course, we have such an established television figure and Mr. Trump participating and Mrs. Clinton, who you know, uh, is not as strong in this uh, regard, but I think many of her supporters want to see her finally go face to face, mano a mano with Trump, and, and and try to you know try to level some attacks. All right, so Trump is defending claims that he made on Thursday morning, where he said that drugs were partially to blame for the violence in Charlotte. Uh, what is he trying to say about this? That's a good question, Vlad. I think uh, you know he, he he has made all sorts of claims about the violence that. Uh, and, and, the, and the real, uh, you know, the, the disunity and, and, the, and the concerns that people have expressed across the country about uh, relations between law enforcement and these communities across the country. Uh, drugs is, is something he's discussed before. It was discussed, of course, a lot in New Hampshire, given that that state has struggled with the heroin crisis. It's something that resonates in Ohio and other places that are dealing with it as well that remain uh, intensely focused uh, on during this campaign, but uh, it's, it's not entirely clear what he was talking about here. And, and as far as I know, correct me if I'm wrong, Vlad, we haven't seen any evidence that the person 
who was shot there in Charlotte uh, was under the influence of drugs at the time or there was any reason to believe he was. So, mm. uh, you know, it, it's hard to know exactly what exactly he meant. Yeah, I think a lot of people are sh scratching their heads about that. Ed O'Keefe, always a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. Take care.